Welcome everybody to Forza World Sport 7 and today we're taking a look at the 2004 Ferrari 612 Scalietti. Now this is a 2 plus 2 Coupe Grand Tourer that was produced from 2004 to 2011 with 3,025 being made. And uh, yeah, this was Ferrari's second all aluminium vehicle, the first being the 360 Medina. Uh, which means that despite the fact that this was a larger car than the uh, 456 that it replaced, it was only around 200 pounds heavier while having nearly 100 horsepower more from a slightly larger engine. So, uh, yeah, this is easily one of my favourite post-2000 uh, Ferraris, which is despite the fact that I don't think it's one of the prettiest Ferraris, especially uh, at the front, but, yeah, it's far better than the likes of the FF that replaced this car or the... Uh, F12 Berlinetta, uh, as I find those cars to be a little bit too on the ugly side while being a little bit too large. But yeah, this is a uh, really rather nice looking car overall, especially like the rear and the side profile. And uh, yeah, being a 2 plus 2, it means it's got a rear seats, which yeah, you can even get adults in there, which is was not common for a, a 2 plus 2 Grand Tourer back in the day. And uh, yeah, a really rather nice interior as well not festooned with buttons on the steering wheel like a lot of Ferraris became and uh, yeah not got the manual gearbox only 199 of them were ever sold with the manual gearbox this has the uh, semi-automatic flappy paddle but yeah nonetheless nice interior these are one of the nicer interiors on a f modern Ferrari and uh, yeah it's also got a decent amount of space in the boot which is not too much to ask from a uh, Grand Tourer like this but where this car excels is with the uh, engine because it's a, a real masterpiece in terms of sound and horsepower as uh, it has 532 horsepower 434 pounds feet of torque from a 5.7 litre V12 engine uh, slightly larger than the 456 which had a 5.5 litre engine but yeah crucial thing being the fact that it's got nearly 100 horsepower more than that car did uh, while obviously having a bit more on the technology side because as you saw the engine was really rather behind the front wheels making it sort of a front mid-engine vehicle which you know Ferrari have uh, done with plenty of their front engine cars and uh, yeah this was a uh, I wouldn't like to say the start of it but yeah pretty much the same kind of start of it because you know the FF and the F12 kind of borrowed from that so uh, yeah like I said easily one of my favourite post 2000 Ferraris and uh, yeah especially in terms of the uh, front engine variety but nonetheless, let's get out onto the track and see what this car can do. Right, we're at Mugello for just one lap today, just because it's a fairly long track of more than three miles. But yeah, this car's going to eat those three miles up, being the uh, Grand Tourer that it is. So yeah, uh, Top Gear back in the day uh, showed that this car could do everything from motorways and, uh, you know, uh, small, twisty. Uh, B roads or back roads and everything in between and yeah on the track it's uh, pretty much a sensation quite frankly sure there are obviously other Ferraris from you know post 2000s or around this time that are better faster lighter and a little bit more agile but as far as you know a car in this category goes yeah it's well up there don't quite like it compared to the likes of a DB9 which is also a Grand Tourer, but yeah, I'm pretty sure this has much more room in the back than a DB9 ever did. And uh, yeah, this also has more power than that as well. So uh, yeah, it depends what you really want. But both, nonetheless, have really rather large V12 engines. Both are rear-wheel drive, and both are more than capable of doing a great deal of speed and uh, cornering as well. So uh, yeah, cracking car in its own right. This and uh, yeah. Even though it is 15 years old as of uh, recording this video, it's still able to do 0 to 60 in 4.6 seconds, 0 to 100 in 10.2 seconds, and go to a top speed of 201 miles an hour, which is still fairly quick today. That 0 to 60 time is still reasonably competitive. Obviously, the 0 to 100 time isn't quite as good as some cars in this kind of class, and 201 mile an hour is still fairly decent though it only matches the much older F40, but that was pretty much a racing car for the road in all honesty, but yeah, obviously some Grand Tourers and some cars in this class are slightly quicker at the top end, but yeah, it's still a pretty quick car, and it sounds absolutely glorious with that naturally aspirated V12 engine, not restricted by, well, 
I wouldn't say unrestricted by emissions controls because they were around at this time, but certainly not quite to the extent that they are now. And uh, yeah, certainly doesn't have any turbochargers sapping away at that engine note. So uh, yeah, cracking Ferrari this. I feel like it's really rather quite underrated because it's not an easy looker to get used to, but once you get past the looks and you just drive it, yeah, it's a phenomenal car, quite frankly. And uh, yeah, as you can see, still fairly quick and sounds absolutely glorious with that V12 engine. So uh, yeah, if you've never given the car a try, do try it out, but it wouldn't be surprising that you haven't given it a try out on a previous Forza game because it's not been on many Forza games, in fact. So uh, yeah, so another reason why I really like this game so much is that there are a nice wide variety of cars from previous Forza games and obviously new additions. So uh, yeah, if you've never tried this Ferrari out, I do recommend giving it a try. It probably will surprise you, especially considering how old it is and uh, yeah, still how quick it is nonetheless in comparison to uh, yeah, other vehicles in the same class. So uh, yeah, hope you've enjoyed this video. I certainly have because I love this car and uh, yeah, the whole point of this series is to drive cars I ever love, find interesting or uh, even just like. So uh, yeah, plenty more to come because there are plenty of other vehicles that I haven't reviewed on this game yet. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.